we're going to start with one of the first projects is uh, creating a background or creating a blank canvas using the move tool as well as the brush tool okay so you're going to have two options and once you start working you're going to notice previous projects right now yours is blank but we're going to start with a create new project so press create new button you're going to have custom sizes after you've done a few projects but if you don't have any of this i want you to go ahead and label this project number five and for the size it can be either a five by seven in inches or you can go eight by ten so type in eight by ten and everything else should be the same 300 resolution is good white background and don't worry about none of that press create and as i've done this you have your blank canvas so in the previous project you got an overview of what the toolbar is okay um, or toolbox this is your tool bar area or control panel for your tools this is your drop down menu and over here we have our different palettes or some people call them panels okay so today we're basically focusing on the move tool notice how the control bar changed right here when I chose the different tool in the toolbox so we have the move tool that we're working with and we're also going to be working with the paintbrush tool okay so if you hold, get your tip of your arrow and point it at that little corner you can left click and you can see that there are multiple tools inside of this part of the toolbox so we want the one that's called brush tool it looks like a paintbrush and it's just the paintbrush there are some other tools that look similar like the quick selection tool but notice how it has this little circle that's a different tool so make sure you have the correct tool brush and also this brush that has that arrow that's called a history brush tool we're not going to use that often this is the one we're focusing on is our brush tool okay so i've chosen my brush tool basically this is going to allow me to draw and do different images by left clicking and moving across the surface okay so as i've done a little coloring that's it if i want to change my color there's two different ways i can change it um, I, I can go right here to these two color boxes left click and then i can change it to the color that i want so let's say I want it to be a red color. I would left click, hold, and drag till I get to red. Then I can select the exact red color that I want. So let's say this is good. I have the new color, I have the current color. Let's press OK. Notice how the box changed. And depending what you have open over here, some of this stuff has changed too, okay? So I still have my paint brush. Let's go to the control panel. Right now I have a smaller brush okay but let's say I want to change the size of the brush I come right over here and you can see where it says size now I have this bigger brush as well as I can go to hardness right now it's pretty hard but if I wanted to make it harder I can just make it harder so notice the difference these edges are harder compared to this edge is pretty soft okay so these are different things that you can experiment. You have different types of brushes. So if I wanted to get a soft round brush, notice how it has that fuzzy area. All right, so these are the different options. So remember, this is your paintbrush. These are the different things that you can do, different controls you have for your paintbrush right here at the top, okay? So experiment a little bit with that. I want you to color in your background with different colors or whatever colors you want to do just randomly color draw if you want to actually draw something you're more than welcome to actually draw a picture using the mouse okay so it's up to you what you decide to draw if you want to scribble scrabble but fill it in with plenty of color alrighty so once you have finished with your drawing you are going to import a picture the way that I'm going to import a picture, specifically, you're going to import the, the selfie that you took a little while ago. So now there are two ways you can do this. One way is to go to your file at the top. So we have the menu at the top, menu bar. You get a drop down menu, and then you're going to go to a term that's called place and embed. So click on place and embed. 
your folders are going to pop in, pop up. You're going to go to projects. Right now you've already created a folder that says Photoshop projects. So you're going to go to the one that says Photoshop projects and you are going to open that image that you've already used. Okay, so right now I'm just going to open one of my images or uh, the, the selfie picture. And once I've done that, it takes a second, but notice how it has now placed the picture in the same project as the other one. If I want to go to my layers menu over here, my layers panel, this is where I can move around and switch out and turn and control the new image because they're on two different layers. This is on the background, so I want you to notice something. When I go back to the paintbrush, if I have, let's go with a green color, this layer selected, notice how it's a lighter gray. If I have the background layer selected, even if I try to color on top of this image, notice that nothing happens, okay? So what happened? I didn't get, let me switch it back to green. So let's say I wanted to color on top of that. I cannot do so because I have this layer selected. If I wanted to color on this layer, then I would have to select that layer, rasterize the object, make it editable. Once I do that, then now I can color on top of that if I want to. If I don't like what I've done, I can just go back in history and take that off. It's kind of like erasing it or going back, okay? There's multiple ways to do that. So, now that I have worked with my brush tool, I have imported a picture into the project, now I'm gonna go to my move tool. My move tool kind of looks like a, a T or a cross. So as I select my move tool, I go up to my tool options, make sure this button is selected where it says show transform controls. That's very important. When I click that off, notice how those boxes, transform boxes disappear. So make sure that that is on. I want you to click on, make your picture smaller and put it in one of the corners of the project. Okay, so I can see a picture of yourself, your selfie. I can see a picture of your artwork that you've created. Now it's time to turn it in. In order to turn it in, I go back to file. Well, first of all, you see these boxes are still showing and selected. I cannot save it until I've made this permanent. So in order to make it permanent, I go back to my selection tool and then I just click on a different tool. That way I can get rid of that selection tool. The computer knows I'm not working on it no more. So now notice when I come to file, I have different options. I wanna to go to my save as option, all right? So for now, don't save it to the cloud. You're gonna actually save it to the computer that you're working on. That's why it's important that you work on the same computer, okay? So file, and here we go. This is gonna be on your Google form. It's only one question, and it's very important that you know the difference between a PSD format and a JPEG format, okay? So make sure you have your projects folder selected, or it's either gonna be there or here. That way you'll know where you're saving it. The project's already titled, because you titled it Project 5 at the beginning, and then it's gonna, you're gonna save it in the format as a, a Photoshop project. The reason that this is important, it's also known as PSD, is if you were not finished with this project, this allows you to keep working on your project until you get done. It basically saves the project with the layers open, okay? So you can keep working on it in the future. So that's very important. So I've just saved it as a PSD, but let's say now I'm finished, I need to save it as a copy or a JPEG. So I go to File, save on your computer and then I go to the drop down menu and I find JPEG. Now notice there's three different JPEG options. Always save the very first one. JPEG that doesn't have nothing else on it. I press save. It's going to ask me what quality would I like to save it as and I'm going to save it as an 8. That's fine. So. I have just saved it to my projects folder and now you will go turn it in the same way that you did earlier.